Hey, this is Ron with the Radiologic Technologist.com blog and YouTube channel. And I have somebody asking me questions today about um, a particular program. And they're kind of mentioning a little bit about cross training. And, and if I go to private school with the credits uh, transfer and all that stuff. So after several pages of replying in, in text and uh, actually through Messenger, I've just decided I'm going to do a video on it and see if I can't cover everything because these are real common questions that a lot of people ask. And so um, let's just kind of jump in there. The school uh, and, and what this is going to show you is how to evaluate a program and it's going to kind of give those of you who are interested in radiology or radiography in particular. I'm going to review this college's uh, uh, program of study and talk about the classes that are in the school. So um, do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And let's get started. We've got uh, Stevie here is interested in Regis College in his area of Massachusetts. Uh, and they offer MRI and CT. And he says, I hope they will accept non-traditional students. I'm not sure what he means from that, but um, let's, let's just do some screen share action here and pop over to um, Lawrence Memorial slash Regis College. So this is the homepage here. And this is, uh, this just shows that Regis College works with, in conjunction with Lawrence Memorial Hospital. And that means that's where you would be doing your clinical rotations or your on-site learning. X-ray school is combined of a mixture of classes and real world clinical rotations is what they're called. So you sit in a classroom and study and take tests, which is really what you need to pass your board exams because you have to be licensed in order to get out in the real world and do this for a living. So you go to class, take your classes, pass those and then go sit for a board exam. But you also have to have so many hours in a clinical rotation to sit for that board exam. So Regis here is saying that they work with Lawrence Memorial Hospital uh, to allow students to go there. And this particular program is an, an associate in science is what that means. An associate is a two-year degree versus a bachelor of science, which is a four-year degree. So here's another class or another program they offer in breast imaging that culminates into a bachelor's. Uh, and then the vascular interventional culminates into a bachelor's, a, a straight bachelor's from an x-ray tech. And so let's just look more at the radiography program here and see what they've got. So I think I'll go back a page. Um, and we'll go into, you can see the, the program overview just says we have an x-ray school and we're awesome. And uh, that's pretty much it. Go into the curriculum and let's look at their most recent plan. So this is a radiography program, full-time curriculum, and they break it down by semesters. And typically like this one, it has a summer semester, a fall and a spring, and then a second summer, and then a second fall and spring, and then you're done. So you start in the summer and they give you three classes and they go by credit hours, which is based on how many hours of class and they show you that in column two. And so in the summer, they have you taking a basic, and I say that because it's biology 105 that usually indicates that it's a beginning level. You know, in college, it starts in the 100s and then goes to the 200s up to four or 500s. And so, Right off the bat, they've got you an anatomy and physiology one and a lab that goes with it. So that means you have a classroom class and a separate class in a lab room where you touch things and look at things. Uh, and they, they also, within the same summer semester, they push you through a and P one and then put you through a and P two. And in the middle of those, or um, I'm sure they don't do them concurrently, but I suppose they could if they really wanted to, you have MR100, which is Introduction to Radiologic Technology. So that, and it has a lab with it, it says, that's a three credit hour course. That's where they start to teach you about what radiography is and the career path and maybe 
uh, the opportunities for advancement and the and the role it plays in the whole scheme of things with doctors and nurses and all that stuff. So in the first summer semester, you only have 11 credit hours and it's broken down by those three classes. And then in the fall, you start what's considered a full-time semester uh, because everywhere I've ever gone, full-time is 12 credits or more. Maybe it's 11 credits now. Maybe this is, well, they're calling it a full-time curriculum. So I guess 11 qualifies now, but this is 15 credit hours, which means you're going to have more work. So in the fall semester, your first fall semester, you're starting out with uh, it's probably medical radiography is what the MR is, I'm guessing. Another 100 level, 101, which usually means it's the very first step. And this is radiologic procedures and related anatomy, one with a lab. So procedures means doing the exams, how you do them, what the different procedures are. Um, and it comes with a lab and it goes over the anatomy that goes along with it. And they, they have a lab where maybe you go in and, I don't know, move some x-ray cameras around or something. And then they also have you in a class called patient care and radiography, where they teach you how to give proper patient care uh, under the umbrella of radiography. Um, and that could be, you know, your ergonomics. It could be how to properly lift, how to put a patient on a table, how to get them in and out of a wheelchair. It's how to take care of the patient. And then it looks like they start you in a clinical experience. That's for, uh, that's another way of saying uh, clinical rotation. Now this may be a classroom setting, MR120, radiologic clinical experience one. That may be the classroom teaching you what you're gonna go through when you get to the hospital to do your rotations, or they may be throwing you right into the hospital, which is completely possible. Um, because it, I mean, it, it makes the, it makes sense to give you at least one semester of book knowledge before putting you in the hospital. And they do that by giving you the summer semester. Um, but you know, it's, it's stressful on students to think, well, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. And you're asking me to go to the, to the hospital and start doing x-rays. Um, but I'm telling you, that's just how it is. You just have to accept that, grab it and, and run because you, the sooner you get into the clinical rotations and start learning, the more comfortable you're gonna become, the faster you'll understand it and be confident. So second semester, you've got um, clinical experience in there and then they, they dump you into radiology physics, which is the hardest class in x-ray school. I've done um, polls on Facebook groups of x-ray techs and I ask, what's your hardest class? What do you think was the hardest class? And they always say physics um, because physics is tough and it's not stuff you use in everyday life. And this is one of those classes you're going to have to learn just to pass your board exams and you never have to deal with it again for the most part. And in this fall semester, this first fall semester, there's also a non radiography program. I'm taking that to mean an elective, some type of elective that you can take for three credit hours during that semester. Now, so you have to get so many credit hours total for this program to qualify for an associate's degree. So in other words, they have a total down here. 77 credit hours. So the when I when I started college, you had to have 64 credit hours to be qualified to get an associates. These guys are giving you 77 credit hours. So maybe the uh, maybe the amount you need to get an associate has gone up a little bit, but they have to fill those hours or they can't give you an associate. So it looks like you're getting non radiography electives and in, in every semester is what I'm seeing except for except for summer, there's two of the last two semesters. So are they just filling the holes? I don't know. Let's, let's keep going and see what it says. So fall, you're done. You had eight, you had 15 credit hours. Then you jump into spring. So you had a Christmas break, relax, have some fun, jump right back in in January. And they throw you in 102 radiologic procedures and related anatomy, which is a continuation of the 101 that you had in the fall semester. So it's just continued teaching about the different things we do in, in radiography and the anatomy that it's affecting and a lab to, to look and feel and see and touch. And then MR111, radiologic imaging in a lab, uh, and notice it's a one. Uh, that's where you start learning your, um, well, I was going to say that's where you start learning your uh, positioning, but um, that's too late in this 
in the game to start learning it. So the radiologic procedures and related anatomy must be your positioning class. Usually it's called positioning and they don't have that word in here. So I'm guessing their radiologic procedures and related anatomy is positioning where, you know, today we're learning the hand and you put the hand in the AP and the lateral and the oblique and you, you're you shoot this way and your cavian mass is this and your SID is this. So it's all the different things you have to know about every single x-ray exam that you do. And that's what looks like radiologic procedures and related anatomy is. And then radiologic imaging and lab, not sure what they're gonna do with that one. It's a 111, so it's a little bit more advanced. Um, maybe it's more of the procedural type, type stuff like lumbar punctures and upper GIs and that sort of thing. I'm just not sure, but you can always ask. You can always call the school and ask what it is or I saw on that previous page course descriptions. So you could go through that if you want to know exactly what that class is. Radiation biology and protection is about how the um, protons and electrons interact with the human body, uh, how it can cause uh, negative effects on the human body, what you can do to protect against it. And you need to know that for your board exams. And then one more, uh, cl another clinical rotation in the spring and then another clinical rotation in the summer. So your, your clinicals um, rotated, oh, this is just the first year too. So you still have the fall of the second year, which is more positioning and more imaging lab and more clinical rotations and two more electives, I guess. And then in your last semester, you get into advanced, which is the next level of these guys. So I'm guessing advanced radiologic procedures, you know, they might allow you to shadow. That, that might be a mixture of CT, MR, ultrasound, that kind of stuff. Or um, it could just be advanced x-ray procedures like the lumbar punctures and upper GI, small bowel follow-throughs, swallows, um, the fluoroscopy, uh, BEs, things like that. Um, might be what that is. And then in your last semester, you've got pathophysiology, which is looking at normal uh, physiology versus abnormal physiology. Um, and then your last clinical and two more electives. And it does say down here that the non-radiography courses um, are these. So it looks like you can double up on A&P if you need help with that. Maybe, and maybe they require it, I don't know. Uh, there's a writing class, another critical reading and writing class, ethics, statistics, sociology, and, and art. I don't know why they throw art in there, but that is what Regis College does. And again, if you were to go back to the first part of that um, curriculum, I think it was. Yeah, there's your course descriptions. So you can click into course descriptions and look at what exactly is that particular class and it'll explain the entire thing to you. So my concern about Regis College, and I don't know if it's a good college or if it's a bad college, um, I haven't looked into any of that, so I'm not gonna say one way or the other, but I, I did notice that it's very expensive. Um, if you click into there and you click on program costs, uh, I don't know, maybe we can go into 2021. You're looking at um, down here, I believe I saw it. Yeah, each semester, three grand, 12 grand, 12 grand, five grand, 10 grand, nine grand, and I'm rounding. But you know, if you're, you're at 20 right there and another 20 right there, so there's 40. Uh, so you're at 50,000, 50,000 for an x-ray program. That's a lot of money. Now here's the breakdown on that. And I've, and I've shared this in a couple of my blog posts if you wanna go research it more. But I chose something like this, not near as expensive, but I chose something like this when I was getting into x-ray because the local public program had a two to three year waiting list. Now I would much rather have paid $6,000 to go to x-ray school, but I would have had to wait three years to get in the program plus wait two more years to graduate the program before I started making more money. And the public programs usually have prerequisites that are due before you get into the program. From my experience, the private schools like this one um, incorporate the 
prerequisites into the program. And that might be what we saw with all those biology classes, the A and P being electives. So um, here's the math. I'll go ahead and stop sharing at this point. So here's the math on it. Let's say you make 10 bucks an hour working at McDonald's and you say, I wanna to go to x-ray school. If you wait for the public school program so that you only have to pay $6,000, you're gonna be making $10 an hour at McDonald's for the next three years. And then you get into x-ray school for six grand. And then you're gonna go through x-ray school for two more years. So for five years, you're gonna be making $10 an hour. And then you'll graduate and make 20 plus an hour. So you double your income. So it's a good idea to go to x-ray school because you double your income, but, and you only owed 6,000 at the end of that five years. But if you could get into the private school right away, which is usually the case, then you would go through two years of x-ray school and you'd be making $10 an hour while you're in x-ray school. But that third year, when you graduate and jump out into your new career, you're making double, you're making at least $20 an hour. And then, for the next two years or three years after that, because we're looking at five-year increments to be apples to apples, <clears throat> excuse me. Remember the first year, you had to make $10 an hour all the way through. I mean, the, the first going through public school, you had to make $10 an hour all the way through. But on the private school, you only made $10 an hour the first two years. And then you made $20 an hour, $20 an hour, $20 an hour for the three years after graduation. So you doubled your income for three years or, or you could say three years earlier than you would have if you'd gone the public school route. So you're gonna to have to do the math to compare what you're currently making and what you could be making and determine, is it worth the extra money? I mean, let, let's say you come out making 60,000 years an x-ray tech out of the private school over three years after graduation, that's $180,000. Can you take 45,000 out of that and go pay off your private school loans? Probably, but uh, you know, cost of living goes up, things happen. You might have a ton of bills, who knows? That's just, that's what got me into private first so that I could get out faster because then I jumped into ultrasound school, which was another two years. And then I got in and out of that quicker. And when I got out of ultrasound school, I was at $33 an hour, which was even more than I was making, you know, quite a bit than an x-ray tech. So anyway, there's kind of how I evaluate a program, uh, how I think of public versus private. Um, you did kind of mention too, Stevie, about um, cross training and, and we need to be clear, cross training has nothing to do with the schools. Cross training is what you do on the job. So if you're in a school and you're in an x-ray program and they allow you to sit in some CT classes you got the knowledge of the CT classes, but that's not cross training. Cross training, well, I mean, I guess you could call it cross training, but you can't sit for the board exams for CT until you've both taken the classwork and done the clinical hours. And I don't remember how many it is, but it's, uh, you know, 600 exams or something I think you had to have for CT. You have to have so many in each type of exam before you can sit for the board exam for CT. So you, you can take your classes in school, but you have to do clinical rotations on the job because you can't do them when you're a student in x-ray school. So you have to graduate x-ray school, get a job as an x-ray tech, and then do clinical rotations at work for like six months, however long it takes you, take that experience with the classes you took in school and go sit for the CT board exam to become a, a certified CT tech. That's cross training in my mind. Yes, you can take classes in school, but that's not the whole, the whole process. And uh, schools can't get you CT rotations, last I heard. So that's where the on-the-job training comes. So I hope that's made sense. Um, if you have more questions, leave them in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for asking the question. I, I appreciate it. Good luck.